Welcome back. Today we're in lesson 15 and we're going to talk about surface area and geometric solids. So geometric figures that have three dimensions are called geometric solids and geometric solids whose sides are at right angles are called right geometric solids or just right solids. The top and the bottom of a right solid are called the bases of the right solid and are identical to each other in geometric these geometric figures. If the bases of a right solid are polygons, then the right solid is called a right prism. Now, specifically, the surface area of a geometric solid is the total area of all exposed surfaces. So, let's write that down. It's very important that you know that. Surface area is the total area of all exposed surfaces. And there is no one formula for, um, for this. It's, instead, it's more of a process. And you have to memorize the steps of the process as well as understanding the shape that you're looking at. Each shape is going to have a different process depending on what it contains. And because um, there are a variety of shapes, we're going to start with the simplest one first. And that is going to be a rectangular prism. So in this right rectangular prism, the dimensions are in centimeters and all of the sides are square to each other. So we are going to look at how to handle a rectangular prism. Um, the thing to remember when you're looking at it is that the top you have six different sides. Okay, you have a top and a bottom, a left and a right, and the left is kind of hidden. But if I draw, these are like the interior lines. Think of a box. You know, a box has a top and a bottom, and a left and a right, and a front and a back, right? So this box in particular, uh, we have the top and the bottom, we have the left and the right, and then we have the front and the back, okay? So that's how we're going to calculate it. We're going to calculate um, one of those and then multiply it by two because they're identical to each other. There's no sense in calculating two of the same thing three times. It's kind of silly. So we're going to just make a little note here. Top and bottom, TB, equals two times some value. So the top here it's three inches along this size. It's inches, no, it's centimeters. It's three centimeters along this side and four centimeters along this side. So it's three by four, right? Three times four, and that's going to give us 12 times two. It's going to give us 24, and it's centimeters squared. So now that's the top and the bottom. So now let's see the front and the back. So the front here, front and the back, is going to be 2 times um, 2 times 4. So 2 times 4, which is 8 times 2, is going to be 16 centimeters squared. Okay, so that's our top and our bottom and our front and our back. Now let's do our left and our right sides. And there's two of those. And we can see the height is 2. And along the base here, this is the base, it's 3. Because these two lines are parallel to each other, so they're also congruent. So 2 times 3, which is 6, times 2, that's going to be 12. So 12 centimeters squared. Now we have all six sides, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And these are their totals, and we're going to add them together. So we have 12 here. And we have 52 here, centimeters squared. And that's how you would calculate. You would do the area of the top, the area of the bottom, the area of the left, the area of the right, the area of the front, the area of the back. And because we know that the top and the bottom are the same, we just have to calculate it once and multiply it by 2. Same thing for the front and the back and the left and the right. And that makes it pretty easy to do once we understand how to do that. Okay. Moving on, let's look at example 15.2. Now we have a um, right triangle prism, and the dimensions here are in meters. 
and we need to find the surface area. So the first thing we have to do is understand our shape. We have a triangle that is three dimensional. Let's look at here is the interior lines so we can see all of the sides. So we have a bottom. Okay, this is the bottom right down here. So let's write bottom. Okay, and that's going to let's put an equal sign. And then we have a back to this. We'll call it, or we'll call it the side, because it's really this is more of the back. We have a side over here that's a square. So let's do the side. And we have a front triangle and a back triangle. So we have a front and a back triangle. And then we have this slope here, this sloped side. So we'll call it the we'll call it the slope side. All right, and those are all the surfaces that we can name on this shape. So there's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now the front and the back are um, identical to each other, right? So the thing we know about a triangle, the area of a triangle, is the base times the height divided by two because it's half the size of a rectangle, right? Um, but if we have two triangles and we were to say, okay, based on the height times two, then we would cancel each other out. We would divide by two and then turn around and multiply by two so those two would be factored out of our scenario. So we can just say base times height and get the front and the back all at the same time. So let's go do that right now. So our front and our back is four times three. So four times three is gonna equal 12 meters square. We don't have to divide it by two. We don't have to multiply it by two. And just to show you that that's correct, I'm gonna go ahead and solve it like that. That would be four times three divided by two, okay, would be the area of the front triangle. So 12 divided by two um, would be six, right? And if we, that's six for this one, if we added six for this one, six times two would be 12. And that's the same thing we got here, okay? So that makes mathematical sense to factor those twos out because it saves us a step. We didn't have to do all of that up here. We just had to do four times three and be done with it. All right, so let's talk about the bottom. The bottom is three by six. So we can just say three by six. That's a three, not a two. So three by six, which is 18 meters squared. The side back here, we have six here and four here because this side is congruent to this side. So four by six, so we'll write that down, four by six equals 24 meters squared. And now all we have left is the sloped side and we have a length of six and then a length of five so that's gonna be six times five. That's gonna equal 30 meters square. So we have the bottom, which is 18 meters. We have the side, which is 24 meters. The front and the back, which are both six meters individually, which makes 12 added together. And then 30 meters for the sloped side. So we're gonna add those together and we are going to get that's 10, 14, carry one, and then that's four, five, six, seven, eighty-four meters squared for fifteen point two for this triangular right prism. Okay. Oh look, I got that right. I checked the book. I did a good job. All right. Let's do fifteen point three. Fifteen point three is a cylinder. So we have to think about. I forgot to draw my radius. Let me put that in. We have to think about the shape of a cylinder. So we know we have a top circle and a bottom circle, right? Which kind of 
sketch that in there. So we have the top circle and the bottom circle that it's sitting on. So there's the top and the bottom, and we know they're identical. So we can say the top and the bottom is two times whatever that is. Okay, erase this. Now we have to think about how do we calculate this around here? Well, if you were to, let's say peel, let's say it's a label on a paint can, and we were to peel it off and lay it out, it would be a rectangle, right? That label all the way around, that piece of paper that wraps from this side all the way around. So the thing, the thing to do is to calculate it the same way you would calculate a rectangle's area. And that's by finding this length here and this length here, right? So we know what this, this is, the height is 10. We know what that is because it's given to us. What we don't know is this one. Well, this is pretty easy because um, it's just the edge of the circle and the edge of the circle all the way around from one point to the next, that's the circumference, right? So it's the circumference of the circle is what we put for this dimension here. So we have the top and the bottom twice, and then we have the circumference times the height of the uh, cylinder, and that's gonna give us the area of the outside of that cylinder. So we will write, let's do the, um, let's just call this the, let's call it the lateral surface area. We'll just call it lateral, okay? Lateral area, because this lateral means side. That's what lateral stands for. So the lateral part of the cylinder is the side part. So the side, it's really only one side because there are no corners. It just goes all the way around. So the lateral area. Um, so let's start with the top and the bottom. Let's start with the area of this four inch or is it inches? Yes, it's four inch radius. So Let's begin the area of a circle is pi r square. Um, uh, that's going to be pi four square, which is 16, so 16 pi, okay? And 16 pi is the same as 50.24 inches square. All right, so now we have the area of the top and we can multiply it by two to get the area of the bottom as well. So let's put that in here, 50.24 inches square. And that is going to give us 100.48 inches square. All right, so we got the top and the bottom done. Now we've got to find the lateral surface area. So the first step is to find the circumference of this four inch radius circle so that we can multiply it times the height to get this area, which is what's wrapped around our cylinder. So we just move over here and we say the circumference and the circumference equals two pi r, right? R is four. So we have two times four, that's gonna be eight pi. And eight times pi is going to be 25.12 inches squared. Okay, and the lateral surface area is going to be the circumference times the height, which in this case is 25.12 inches, sorry it wasn't inches squared, just inches because it's the length here, times the height, which is 10, so times 10 inches is going to equal, equal 251.2 inches squared. 
and we add those together. We bring down our 8, that's 6, let's bring down inches squared. Then we have 1, 5, 3. So 351.68 inches squared is our answer. And I hope you see how easy that was to find and how you have to kind of, you have to kind of visualize the outside of that being a rectangle or a label wrapped around a can. That's what we did. We just unwrapped it, laid it flat, and then measured this length or calculated this length times this height. And that's the lateral area of this tube. So, all right, so one more. We have a weird shape here. 15.4. Let me get my page all the way up. There we go. So 15.4 is this odd-shaped base. Um, and then it is 10 uh, feet high. So the dimensions are in feet. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the area of the top and the bottom. Those are the easiest ones to find. So here is our... Here's our top and here's our bottom. It's sitting on the bottom. So find this and this. So that's going to be top and bottom. It's going to be two times whatever. So let's put that parentheses there. So first of all, let's break this down. We'll call this area one and area two. Okay, area one is pretty straightforward. We have a rectangle here that's six by five. So six times 5 is going to equal 30 and that's in feet so it's 30 feet squared. Um, now we have a half circle that's area 2. So we're going to get the area of that circle and we know the area of a circle is pi r squared and because it's a half circle we're going to divide it by 2. So that's going to be this is a 3, the radius is 3, so 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times pi is, what is 9 times pi? It's 28.26. 28.26 divided by 2 is 14.13, and that's feet squared. Okay. So we can add those two together, area one and area two, and we just add 30 to this number, so that's gonna be 44.13 feet squared, and that's going to be 88.26 feet squared, and that's the top and the bottom, okay? Now we need to find the lateral area, again, the lateral part. And that's the side that's all the way around. And again, we're going to picture our label, like we are, our, we'll start right here, and we'll lay it out. And in order to get this perimeter here, or this circumference, we have to break this into parts. So let's look again at our base shape and see if we can calculate it. We know if this is 5, then this is going to be 5. So from here all the way around to here, this bit, we have 5 plus 6 plus 5. So that's going to be 16, right? So we have 16. And now we have to find this half circumference. So we need to calculate the circumference of a circle, and the circumference is 2 pi r, and our r, it's going to be 2 pi 3, so th 2 down 3, that's 6 pi, okay, and it's a half circle, so we have to divide it by 2. So we could have done that at the beginning and, and factored it out, That I didn't think about that. So it goes back to 3 pi. So 3 times pi is, oh goodness, <laughs> 9.42. Yes. So 3 times 3.14 is 9.42, because that would be 12, carry 1, so yeah. 
So it is 16 plus 9.42, which is 25.42 feet squared. So now we add those two together. Do we add those? No, we don't. We don't. Sorry. It does equal 25.42 feet squared. But now we have to multiply it by 10 because that's the height. That's just our perimeter around the top. I forgot about that. Okay. So this was 16 and this was 9.42. We added them together. We got 25.42. But now we have to account for the height, which is going to be our label size. Okay. So when we tick our label off of this, we got 25.42 here and 10 here. So now we have to multiply by 10. And all we're going to have to do in order to do that, let me shift this down. Is shift our decimal. So it's 254.20. Alright, and that would be this right here. And that is this part right there. And now we add them together. And we have 342.46 feet square. And that is the same answer the book got. So I got it right. Yay. All right. So to clarify, I kind of got ahead of myself. But we got the flat perimeter. And then we got the half circumference of the circle. And we added them together. And that gave us 25.2. And that's this part all the way around is 25.42. I don't like it when my thing does that. Let's undo. So yeah, this perimeter here. That's what we were that's what we were going for. Was this perimeter. And then we had to that was our label that we peeled off, right? Peeled that label off and unwrapped it and laid it out here. The 25.42 and then it was 10 tall. That's this number here. So 10 tall. So that little, that label, that lateral surface area was 254.20 when we multiplied and we added that to our top and our bottom area and we got 342.46. All right, I know this is a bit much in one lesson. If you find it super confusing, feel free to message me. We can talk about it. I'll try to explain it a little bit more. Maybe give you some more illustrations that'll break it down a bit. Um, if you are not having any trouble, bravo, good job. You're following along and keeping up great. And um, I, I, that's all I have for lesson 15. And I'll see you in lesson 16.